Hey, this is Rocker with a Walker. Supposedly, I am supposed to turn my phone sideways, but I don't know what that is all about. And until I'm on my tablet filming, um, I'm not going to do that. So, today, I had an interloper in the wall tent. Probably a 9-inch gecko. He was sitting on this chair right here and uh i'm all like i'm never going to be able to catch that little sucker because they go super fast and sure enough i put a little liquid on the chair because sometimes they will you know i put a little right there you can see sometimes the little guys will drink the, li the like like it's nectar and obviously that's not panning out, so I'll clean that up. But, um, you know, crazy. And so then, and I I was actually on the phone when um, they had, the lizard had been up there, crawling up the front of my tent and whatnot, probably looking for bugs. That's what they're good at. Everybody here is all like, oh no, they're sacred because they kill bugs and you want to have them in your house. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want reptiles in my house. You know, um, let me do bug management in my dwelling. I don't need reptile help, but apparently it's considered good luck. So, oh, got to fix this. So, I think here is a pitfall of having a wall tent. I think up there at the peak, there's a gap. And I think the little sucker got out that way and got in that way. Because, you know, whoever, my friend who put up the wall tent, who I am completely grateful that they did that. Um, I think up there they put it together wrong because there's one of these long, uh, metal bars that sticks out just open on the end. I'll, I'll show you. Just got to make sure. So, anywho, you know, um, hold on for one second. Just gonna put on a frock here because it's kind of chilly today and stuff. And I don't want to offend anybody um, by going outside. And uh, yeah, so I'm on the deck now. So as you can see, that pipe right up there is just open on the end. And it looks like there is a grip of fire ants on the, uh, looks like a nest of fire ants up on the piece that is hanging out right there. And so, got to spray that with some home defense. And then I need to somehow patch that because I think that's how they're getting in. And that is not good. And then... Going back in the, sorry, the uh, the dogs were in here last night because it is so, you know, it was very cold last night. I know you wouldn't think that because it's Hawaii, but, you know, when it's, uh, I think it was 58 degrees, which is really cold when it's usually, you know, 75, whatever. So, yeah. I'm a little freaked out. I do have um, these windows, but as you can see, oh, look at, do you see what I'm saying? They're huge. This guy is on the outside of the net, but he's just chilling there waiting for bugs. Thanks, little lizard, for doing that job, but please don't enter my dwelling. Yeah, so it looks like, see, you can see that he's outside the Oh, there he goes. Guess he doesn't like to be... Oh, there he is. Guess he doesn't like to be on camera. 
they're shy, I guess. And then, crazily enough, I was sitting on my bed, and uh, sure enough, a lizard, a baby lizard, black, crawled out from under my hope chest, which is right there. And uh, when, I guess, my friend told me that when lizards have uh, babies, they're about that size, which was like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And they come out of a clutch of eggs where there might just be one or two. So it is alarming at best because I'm like, do I have to pull out my 500 pound hope chest? feels like 500 pounds I need two people men to move it do I have to like look under there and see if there's some more eggies um cuz you know uh you can step on a cockroach I usually smash it with something um you know if God forbid God forbid there was a centipede I would probably freak out bloody murder because everybody's all like, if you see one, step on it, kill it, whatever. Because it likes to hang out where it's warm. And the warmest place in my room is my bed. And I'd rather not have a giant centipede in my bed. Because when they sting you, it feels like you were shot by a bullet, apparently. And I don't want to ever have to experience that. I did... Uh, rent an airbnb um some months ago and i went into the bedroom when we got there and there was like a blue round thingy on the floor and my friend that was with us was all like oh yeah that's a centipede it's dead and i'm like oh hell no and i went to the owner of the Airbnb who lived on the same, you know, was at the same property and was like, hey, there's a strange bug thing in my room dead. And it was big. It wasn't a little guy. It was like a big, like round bug. And um, she was looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm all like, look, lady, I don't know where you come from. And maybe you've lived here a really long time. But where I come from, there's not dead giant bugs in a room that I'm going to, you know, rent out uh, Airbnb and such. I'm all like, and she was all like, oh no, they stay outside. And I'm like, apparently that one didn't. And I'm like, ooh, uh, that's effing gross. And then I was sitting on the patio of that property um, enjoying the sunset, which I did a short of. Um, early in my channel and um, there I looked over into the flower bed and there was like three or four of them curled up dead and I'm like OMG those are so nasty looking I don't want to ever come in contact with that but if I had to kill it I would I guess get a broom or a big paddle stick or something so I could achieve that because I don't want to be within arm's length of that kind of animal well reptile apparently it, you know it is not an animal I know that it's a reptile but still or it's a bug but I'm not an entomologist so I don't want to be hanging out with bugs you know what I'm saying and then um all night well all day long Lizards travel back and forth on my tent. There is another one. Very likely not the same one because he looks super skinny. And he they just hang out there and he's outside the tent. But that is daunting, right? That is about, maybe that's the one that was in my tent. I don't know, it's super long with that tail. Could be the same one. He's just chilling there. Thank God outside, but he was up here. Now, this whole deal right here is not part of the, uh, it's not part of the 
flap that's in the front, this big part, it's a mosquito netting. And the whole, it covers the whole interior of the front. And then it just zips to the ground. And that's great. But, you know, kind of scary. I, um, this is how I do it. I zip, I put a little string with a straw on the outside so if it's way tall up there I would still be able to um just a quick fix someday I'll get like maybe a wire thing it's just on some fishing line which I bought a grip of because um I was gonna hang things on it but that didn't pan out so I zip the outer flap it's very difficult for me I zip it to there and then the inner one I zip which is fairly easy and then there's but see there's that gap under there and that freaks me out so I take this giant box and put it over the space over the uh it's kind of hard to do one-handed over it to block it because I'm sure something could still get in but it freaks me out and also we have cats on the property and I don't want them in my tent because cats spray and leave their hair everywhere and I have an allergic reaction to cat dander so I'm gonna zip this back up So, nothing, nothing except maybe a fruit fly can get through these windows because, unfortunately, they don't make it all the way to the, the Velcro, but no animal can get through that. And then there's this one over here, and uh, so I'm going to unzip it to show you our garden. There's our garden out the window. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. Maybe from a distance. So that's obviously really needs to be fixed and it will. Just we just haven't needed it. So it's basically storage because sometimes we keep, you know, extra tools and stuff up there. But I keep these zipped up <laughs> here because it could be sunny like it is right now. See, it's very bright. And then um, it could sprinkle. And on this side of my tent, you can see by the shadow here, the extended rain fly goes down. Oh, another lizard. The extended rain fly only goes down so much. And it looks like there's a hole up there too. So that's how they're getting in. They must be. But luckily for me, I purchased this. Um, I'm going to open the rain fly and, the, or excuse me, the, the uh, door here because it's awfully warm in here. And this allows some airflow to get in. The other thing is, I used to feed my little cohort, Aria, a little Chewini, although you saw her, she is ginormous. I, um, you know, uh, had her food up here and the birds, there's a gajillion finches and cardinals, little, little guys, that get up on my deck, you know, see where that bowl of water is, and they, uh, eat the dog food and flip it all over the place and then they walk over to my flap of the tent front and come in my tent and I have literally had to enlist the help of another to get it out of the tent and it was very hard and that has happened four times so I am not willing to share this area with birds and lizards and 
creepy things, you know. Ew. So nasty. I've never lived anywhere where a lizard, you know, nine inches long or whatever, is going to be like hanging out on the wall. Now, at other people's residences where their like hangout area or their kitchen is very likely open air with screen, they have no problem with it. They're like, oh, they're going to get the bugs. And I'm like, yeah, but they're lizards. Um, and they're like, no, they're geckos. And I'm like, geckos are lizards, which are reptiles, and I don't want to be hanging out with them. My friend did say that if there were no lizards here, the bug population would get completely out of control and overtake the island. So they're good in that regard. I just don't want them in my tent. Because of the windows having the, the mesh on them, there, there, and there, you know, I do not want, you know, interlopers. So this is my, here lizard, 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 this is my lizard video. I will call him the interloper. And if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, share, hit your notification bell so you can see every time I upload a new video. And I know they're random and not necessarily all about off-grid living, like the movie reviews thing, which I'm totally going to do. I just want to make sure that, you know, I can get all the information to you so you might want to watch that movie. And... So, you know, that's the gist of that. And then I have all the gear to uh, live stream. So, you know, once the bathroom is obviously not in the corner of my tent, because it's not really a room, it's just a space there. But usually I'm the only person that is in my tent, so I'm not really worried about it. And of course, if I have to tinkle, I might go out to the bathroom on property. But at night, because I'm in a boot and um, it is uncomfortable and scary if you have to walk out to the bathroom because the ground can be uneven and there might be pukas. Pukas are holes. It's the Hawaiian word for holes. So there might be pukas that the dogs dug or it's just the way the natural formation of the property is. And I don't want to trip and fall. And kick my own butt. You know what I'm saying? I just cannot deal with another injury at this point. So that sometimes bodes difficult, you know. Um, but I guess we want to keep this video about 20 minutes long. Um, I guess the attention span of a regular person is about 20 minutes. But I think that. You know, if you watch the video in its entirety, you might get, you know, a snapshot of what goes on here in Hawaii because it is completely different than living anywhere else. And I've lived in Alaska, I lived on the East Coast, I've lived on the West Coast, and I'm going to tell you right now, nothing compares to here. And that's what my videos are mostly about, and I hope that it helps you out. If you live off-grid, and maybe if you're planning on moving to Hawaii, you can avoid the pitfalls that inevitably will happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And luckily, nothing is happening today, but, you know, potentially it could, and that is very stressful. So try to be low-key and chill about it, and then don't cause stress to yourself. You know, but if you know ahead of time, then you'll know what to look for and how to, you know, be more cognizant of your surroundings while you're here. Because it's, like I said, very, very different than the mainland. And if you've lived in a tropical atmosphere, you will understand how, you know, stressful that can be on your mind. You're physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your physiological health, you know, so 
it is a good thing to know these things before you move to a tropical area for sure. So I thought instead of looking at my TV, I would let you look at my awesome setup there, you know, and maybe that will make it a little enjoyable. Thank you for subscribing to my 28 subscribers. You're freaking awesome. And I love that you care about what I say. And, you know, please watch the videos in their entirety. It helps with the algorithm, which everybody talks about. And perhaps I should do a video on the algorithm. And that way you would understand it better. Because I certainly didn't know anything about, all, uh, you know, those algorithms until I started making these videos and it really does help promote your channel and it when you watch a video in its entirety you actually help me promote my channel as a suggestion so like if people put in you know rock or rocker or one of my videos titles um, even a portion of it, my channel might come up as a suggestion and more people would be able to, you know, go on this journey with me too, just like you all are. So a huge shout out to y'all and I hope you have a really nice day and hopefully I will too. Bye.